So there's times when I want to have the iPad with me wirelessly to change a fixture, maybe the fixture uh, number, and I need to have the iPad with me to look that up. But then when it comes to the show, doing the show or doing the, the filming or whatever, I want to have it plugged in so there's no lag or anything. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's get into it. So in my instance here, I'm using a Lumen Radio Aurora for my CRMX device. You can also go directly into this to hardwire if I, if I choose to um, through a node I have here. And then I've got my router all wired in to the network for Wi-Fi and it also passes through as a hardwire so it all talks to each other. Now really this is kind of difficult to do if you don't understand basic IP and networking. That's all it really is, is getting everything on the same IP address and getting it all talking to each other. That's the main thing we want to accomplish. So let me show you first how I wire everything together and then we'll get it talking to each other. So first of all, you're gonna wanna have your computer plugged into the ethernet. You don't have to be on internet to do this. This can be all offline. That cable comes out and comes into my router. Now I know this is a super old router. This is just kind of my testing router at home. And then when I go on actual jobs, I have a, a, a nicer, newer router. But this does the work just fine for getting things uh, situated. So on this router, we're not using the actual um, ethernet that, that would be for internet. Like you're coming in from the wall and then, or from your modem, you would plug it in that first one, which is your, uh, your wireless access point. We're just using the LAN access points, and on this one I have four of them. So this yellow cable coming out is going to my DMX node if I choose to have a wired connection um, to my lights, and I can split off from there or come into the, this wireless unit and then shoot it out as CRMX as well. Either way, I can do a split combination or I can just do one or the other. Now there's another cable coming in here that is specifically just for a wireless um, switch, I mean not wireless switch, a regular switch. And the reason I'm using this is because to have ethernet coming out of my iPad or to connect it to this unit wired, I need a PoE powered. So I come in, I have this little um, gigabit PoE adapter which takes it from ethernet over to USB, um, USB B I believe, and then that goes to an ethernet which plugs into my iPad over here. So that plugs into, to here and then I have another line that comes out and goes into my actual router. I would just plug it directly in if it had PoE on the actual router but it doesn't so I have to use this so that they can all talk to each other. So once you make sure that all of those are routed together and plugged in your computer you're going to need to come in and change some IP addressing on your computer to make everything be able to talk to each other. Alright so I'm going to come into my um, internet browser here of your choice, doesn't matter really what it is. I'm going to plug in the IP address of my router which in this case is 192.168.50.3. Bring that up. Now if you plug in your router IP and you're not seeing anything come up, then your computer IP is not in the same range as your router IP. And you're gonna to need to change your computer to match so you can actually see and talk to the router and change the settings. So a quick way to see what your IP is on your computer is just to do uh, Windows R if you're on a PC. Now we come up with a command prompt, we type ipconfig. Now this comes up with all, all, all of our network connections. So we got wireless LAN, we got Ethernet, um, which is the one we're running currently. So as you can see, my Ethernet is IP4. This is the one you're going to want to look for. And it's 192.168.50.180. So we're in the right range there. Now, if this is not the right number, you're going to need to change this number. And there's a quick and easy way to do that. We can exit out of here. You come back to your uh, run, uh, Windows R, and you can type in this right here, ncpa.cpl. You hit OK. This brings up your network connections. Now for this instance, we don't need Wi-Fi on this computer because we're hardwired. So I would just recommend disabling this. I'm gonna do that now. Disable that, just so it's not inter interfering with anything. Now if you're gonna go back to Wi-Fi, make sure you enable that or you could really kind of get mad why it's not working. So I'm gonna come into my ethernet here, right click, go to properties, come down to internet protocol, protocol version four, click that, hit properties. Now this comes up with where you can change it from being a DHCP, which is obtain the IP automatically. And in this case, we want to use, use the following IP address. We don't want this changing. So this is where you're going to want to plug in an IP that's in the same range. That's where that 180 here comes from. And then you plug in your subnet to match and your uh, gateway to match as well. So if you're not getting the right IP coming out of your computer and you can't figure out how to change it, this is the way to do it. And then when you're done, make sure you hit OK. And then you got to close out of this box too before it actually changes. And then you can go back to CMD. I'm going to come back and just verify that IP config. As you can see, 
Now my uh, my wireless is off because I disabled it. Makes it a little cleaner to look, and my IP is correct, so I'm all good there. And now I'm into the Netgear Wizard thing, which is kind of a piece of junk, but I'm gonna show you how to navigate this. Yours is gonna look different depending on what router you have. Now the main thing I had to come into was down here to your setup, your LAN IP setup here. This is what you really want. This is this is what I was talking about on the back here. You got your wireless access, you got your WAN port, and then you got your LAN port. So you're not gonna wanna use that WAN at all unless um, for some reason you did. So now we're basically um, changing what is coming in and out of these uh, LAN ports. So in my instance for my IP, I did 192.168.50.3, and that's what I plugged in up here at the uh, address bar to get onto the actual router and change the settings itself. I recommend um, jotting these numbers down because um, sometimes you can, you can get lost with how many numbers there are. So again, I got the subnet to 255.255.0. Now this was clicked before, use router as a DHCP server. You want to make sure that's unclicked um, for anything. You just want to make sure that it's using a static IP address. Now here is another program that I highly recommend uh, for figuring out IPs and diagnosing problems. It's called Wireshark, it's free online. If I click on my ethernet port here, it's gonna start giving me feedback of what is coming in on my actual computer. And this is great for diagnosing problems and um, seeing what IP addresses are talking to what IPs. So I'm in blackout, I'm gonna come up to my um, wireless settings and I'm just going to connect to the router network which is this one right here. I'm gonna let that boot up. And as you can see on my screen, I'm getting feedback already. And we're getting UDP signals, which means uh, it's basically uh, SACN uh, data coming from the iPad. Now, if I come up to my blackout network and I click on, and I click on my Wi-Fi, I can double check my IP address here, which is 192.168.50.197. So I'm in the right, I'm in the right range. Now, if you're not in the right range and you got a different number, you can come to your, your settings here. You come over to your Wi-Fi, and then you would click on this little I. Scroll down, and then you, you come down here to configure IP. Now, yours might be set to automatic, which is a, it would be looking for a DHCP signal, which is not what you programmed on the router. So you're going to want to hit manual. And you're going to want to plug in an IP address that's in that range of the router. So it could be anything as long as those first three numbers or first three digits of 192.168.50 are the same. And then you want to have your subnet the same. And you want to have your router again. Uh, this is not always required, but it's good practice. I have my gateway router IP set to that same number of 50.3 which is the uh, IP of the router itself. Now I have used this with both SACN and ArtNet pretty well, um, no issues there. Some routers can't handle SACN, so it depends on your router, but usually ArtNet works fine for most routers. Now if you are running a network switch uh, with your router, you're gonna wanna make sure that's in the same IP range as well, uh, which mine is, but in this case, I will show you how I did that. My router is uh, this number here. Now I have a login for this. All right, so as you can see, I'm in my Netgear router here. I have DHCP turned off. I have my IP static IP. My subnet's the same. And then in this case, my gateway did change. Uh, I'm just gonna change that here. Make sure it's 192.168.50.3, just to keep everything nice and happy. I'm gonna hit apply there. And now that's all good to go. So I got my router set up. I got my network switch set up. Final thing to make sure is to make sure your CRMX network is set to the right um, IP as well. If that's either going to be client mode or AP mode. I use an app on my phone to change this. You can also do this on the unit, but it makes it easy on the phone. Now this is set up for AP mode because I was doing something else before. I was just iPad to the unit itself. So in this instance, I'm going to change it to client mode. Make sure DHCP is off and I'm in the same IP range. And then I got 211 for this uh, particular number. Netmask the same, I'm on SACN Universe 1. I'm gonna hit save. Now here's one thing that I came across that was a little bit of a problem. So normally I can just go straight out of the Wi-Fi from here, connect this Wi-Fi on this device to what's being transmitted out of the Aurora when it's in AP mode. Now when I have it in client mode, I cannot access this because it's a transmitter only. It's not a receiver and a transmitter. So in that case, I have to hardline this into this whole uh, router network and that's where the node comes in. So I'm gonna plug this in, make sure it's IP addressed correctly, and then come out of that through a DMX cable, plug that into the unit, and that's how I'm going to get the signal to this, and then in client mode, 
uh, with the right IP, it's talking to everything, and then sending that hardline signal out as CRMX, and then that's coming from, the signal's coming from my iPad. So I'm going to use this little Roscoe DMG dash as my kind of work light um, to, to make sure everything's working correctly together. So now the address for my node is 192.168.50.160. I'm gonna get that up, make sure everything's right in here, which I already know it is, but I'm just gonna show you. If I come over here, DHCP is off again. My IP address is in the same range. It's a dot 60 on this one. Um, you wanna make sure that they're, that they're all different though. These first three numbers need to be the same. The last three digits, you, you don't wanna overlap any of them. They all need to be different for each device, but the first three need to be all be the same. And then my gateway again is 192.3. Uh, MAC address, that's all good there. And then my port here, I have one DMX out, one DMX in, and I'm coming out of port one DMX SACN. If I come over here and I click my universe and I hit uh, enable, this is one feature I like about the um, ENT ODE node. And I start um, just sending some signal from my iPad. You can see there's a couple values changing. So I know that right now wireless from the iPad is coming through fine. I'm gonna come back over to my iPad here I'm just gonna make sure that I'm, I'm on my Roscoe here. I'm just gonna start hitting the button. As you can see, I'm getting some signal coming out. Uh, and that's all through wireless. So this is not connected to anything. All right, now I'm gonna verify that I'm getting signal coming in on the computer as well through capture. I like to use this as a pre-visualizer. I'm gonna come over to my universes and come over and make sure that I am, now I don't have any signal here. I'm gonna come over to my connectivity status. I'm not getting any connectivity. So I'm gonna come into more connectivity options. I'm gonna come in and change this console IP address to what my iPad is, which is 197. Uh, usually this works. I'm gonna hit enter or close. And then I gotta restart it because you have to apparently. Come back over to universes. And now I'm receiving SACN, as you can see there, universe one. And I can verify that. There it is. I'm gonna come over to my iPad. I had to come into another project here. So I start toggling things. You can see that I am getting signal coming in and it's working. Now it is a little laggy and I think that's due to this router being pretty old. This is like 20 years old. It's not real laggy, but since I have so many movers and so many effects in this uh, blackout file, it gets a little bogged down. I went about you know 50 feet away from the router itself in the house and I'm still getting connection fine. So uh, everything's working great. Now, how do I hardwire this in? Now again, that's where this little box comes in handy, coming out as USB-C. I'm gonna plug the other end in, which is a lightning bolt on this case, yours. This is an older I, uh, iPad, so it might be different for you. You might have the USB-C, which is actually a lot better, but now that I plug that in, I'm also gonna grab the other line for this ethernet, plug that in here. Now I'm getting power to that box. It, this is again going into the switch this time. So coming into the switch and then one uh, line coming out, going back into the router to connect the switch to the router. I'm gonna come up to my link status here. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna turn off Wi-Fi because I don't want them interfering. Now you can see my link status here. It automatically changed to ethernet because it picked up that I have an ethernet port plugged in now. Now I'm gonna click on my ethernet, just double check that the IP is the same. Now I have uh, wired this so they're both manual, no matter if it's on ethernet or Wi-Fi, they're both manual IPs and I have them set to the exact same IP, the 50.197. Uh, just to keep it simple, that anything coming from the iPad, either wireless or wired, is 50.197. So I know that that's my iPad. The Wi-Fi is off. I am connected uh, hardline. Now if I start playing around with this again, you can see that it is working in capture as well. And you can also see that my DMX little light physically is working as well. Now it's not on quite the right uh, channel here because I had to change to a different project but I can verify that it is getting signal and it's wireless. There's nothing connected to this. It's straight up coming out of the CRMX box wirelessly. So I have wireless connection coming out of here. I have a wired option coming out of here if I wanted to. I can come out of the other port or I can also come out of the other port on here either way. And then my iPad is hardwired in. And then if I wanted to, at a glance, I can unplug this, get back on the Wi-Fi, and then I'll have uh, wireless connectivity again so I could walk around with the iPad. So that's basically all there is to it guys. I know it sounds like it's, I make it sound kind of simple and it is a little complicated, but all it is is really IP addressing, uh, your network, your subnet mask, and your IP gateway, making sure those are all 
the same and that they're all lining up together. Now, if you guys have any uh, specific questions regarding any of the components like the router or, or your, your CRMX device, let me know in the comments. I'll try to help you out. Appreciate a like, subscribe. It really helps me out. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>